I finally found you, and this time, I won't let you get away. W what are you doing here? Too bad. Just let me raise my grandchild. You were too useless. When I reunioned with my mother-in-law after several years, I felt a tremendous sense of discomfort. I'm confused by her sudden statement. Grandchild? What is she talking about? I don't have any children yet. My mother-in-law changed her expression and forcibly entered the house. Then start rummaging through the house while shouting. Realizing everything, I made a phone call to someone. This time for revenge is now. My name is Erica, and I am 34 years old. I work as a company clerk. Recently, I just got married. I met my husband George when I was 29 years old, and we got married after dating for four years. George always prioritizes my feelings and is the ideal partner, who accepts everything. I am truly happy that I could become a couple with him. However, the happiness was short-lived as an incident happened three weeks after the registration. My mother-in-law was in a traffic accident and broke her ankle, leaving her unable to live alone. My father-in-law passed away a few years ago, so only my mother-in-law lives in the family home. I had a bad feeling. One day, my husband approached me and said, "Erica, my mom contacted me. She says she wants to live together, while her leg heals." What? Living together? That's difficult to decide just like that. I understand. If it's too much. I can take care of my mom by myself. You can stay here. Does that mean we'll be living separately? We just got married, and yet. I'm sorry about that, but my mom seems to be having a hard time, and as her son, I can't just leave her alone. I understand George's feelings. Even if I were in his position, I would have thought the same thing. However. I had a reason for not being able to accept the living together so easily. That's because my relationship with my mother-in-law is not good. It all started when I first met her. When we visited George's family to announce our marriage, my mother-in-law said something like she was examining me. Are you George's partner? You are a more normal girl than I expected. Oh. My name is Erica. George has always been good to me. Well, of course, he can't leave alone someone who looks as clumsy as you. George is too good for you. Despite being the first time meeting, my mother-in-law mercilessly threw those words at me. At the time, my husband was away from the seat, so he didn't know about it. I didn't tell him about it afterward either. It was right after we got married, and I didn't want to worry him. But this time, the situation is different. I don't want to be away from my husband. I've made up my mind. Okay, I'll live with you, mother. Really? Is that okay? Yes. It's lonely to be away from you, hon. We finally got married, you know. Thank you, Erica. I'm sure my mom will be happy too. My husband's eyes sparkled with joy. Seeing that, I couldn't bring myself to tell him that I was disliked by my mother-in-law. And so, just three weeks after our registration, we started living with my mother-in-law. Reality was even harder than I had imagined. One day, after finishing work and coming back from shopping. My mother-in-law greeted me with a reluctant voice, and then she spoke up with an annoyed voice. "Erica, what were you doing until this time?" "Huh? After work, I went shopping for a bit. Wasn't work until four o'clock. It's already six now. How long have you been out playing around?" 
I had to work overtime today. Plus, I needed to buy ingredients for dinner. I showed my shopping bag to my mother-in-law, but she immediately shouted, "Shut up! You should be grateful just to be able to live in this house. I was supposed to live with George alone, but you were just a nuisance." Well, well, I got married to George. I think it's strange to live separately so soon after getting married. I don't care about that. Besides, I never approved of your marriage in the first place. Why? Why would you say something like that? Why? It's obvious. You are the one who I hate the most. If you understand, then hurry up and get a divorce. My mother-in-law mercilessly trampled on my heart. Even though it was only the beginning of our cohabitation, my mind was getting more and more exhausted. A few months later, my mother-in-law had become quite proficient at walking, but my mental state was nearing its limit. With her newly acquired mobility, she began to interfere with me even more. Even when I was cooking, doing laundry, or cleaning, she would complain. I tried to avoid her as much as possible by locking myself in my room, but she still came in and scolded me for neglecting household chores. So much longer would this painful life continue? If I endured any longer, I would really lose my mind. Finally. I faced my true feelings and decided to confess the truth to my husband. Hey, George, there's something I need to talk to you about. Is now a good time? What's wrong? Did something happen? I, I've realized that I really want to live alone. Is that okay? My husband's eyes widened in surprise, momentarily speechless. He grabbed my shoulders. With a startled look on his face, what's going on, Erica? Why are you suddenly talking about living alone? The truth is, I'm being severely bullied by your mother. It's basically harassment. I've been enduring it all this time, but I've reached my limit. What is that all about? When did it start? Why didn't you tell me? Since we started living together, I didn't want to say anything bad about your mother, who is, after all, your mother, and someone I care about. That's why I kept quiet. Oh, Erica! My husband's eyes began to water. He pulled me close and whispered in my ears, "I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Erica. I didn't notice anything. Don't apologize." It's my fault for not discussing it with you. No, it's not. As your husband, I should have noticed. I'm sorry it got to this point, but I'll take care of this, so don't worry. Thank you, George. I'm glad we talked about it. The next day, my husband started looking for a new home right away. Of course, he didn't tell his mother that we're preparing to move out. We prepared everything in time for the move-in day. It was on the day of the move that we finally told his mother the truth. Mom, we're leaving this house. His mother's eyes widened in surprise. What? What are you talking about? My husband explained. You were bullying Erica, weren't you? What are you talking about? I would never do such a thing to Erica. Erica wouldn't lie about this. We moved in with you because we were worried about you, but you insulted Erica behind my back. That's just low. We're cutting ties with you. What are you talking about? That's nonsense. Wait, George. Goodbye, Mom. I don't think we'll ever see each other again. No, George. Hey. He vigorously shook off his mother, who was clinging to his arm. My mother-in-law wept until the end, 
as she watched us leave. After that, peaceful days began that were beyond recognition. Originally, it should have been like this from the beginning. Spending each day with my husband is truly happy. There's no pain in my heart. Like any other couple, we occasionally have arguments, but we've always been able to overcome them because we have a mutual desire to understand each other. And a few years later, even happier things happened. My sister and her husband moved in near us. My sister is eight months pregnant. And will soon enter her final month. Not only do I feel relieved to have my sister nearby, but I am also excited to have a nephew. Because she is nearing her due date, I accompany her as much as possible when she goes shopping. One night, I had some errands to run and couldn't go with her. That night, my sister called me on the phone. Actually, Something scary happened at the supermarket today. What happened? Are you okay? Yes. While I was shopping, a strange woman suddenly came up to me and said, I finally found you. When did you get pregnant? It was so scary. And she spoke in a very aggressive tone. And then, suddenly, she slapped me. I was so confused and scared. Then I immediately hailed a taxi and came back home. It was super scary. What? She slapped you? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I was more surprised and scared than hurt. I'm sorry I couldn't go with you today. It's not your fault. Anyway, I think I should avoid going out alone from now on. Yeah, agree. That's a good idea. From now on, I will always go with you, okay? Her story was too shocking, and even though it wasn't my experience, I felt scared. How could someone do something like that when there is a baby in her belly? It's certain that there is a dangerous person nearby. From that day on, I decided to always go with my sister using a car when she goes shopping. We never encountered that woman again. As time passed, our fear gradually faded away. Two months later, my sister safely gave birth to a long awaited baby boy. Several weeks later, my husband and I headed to my sister's house. She seemed to be struggling with her first child, along with her husband. While we were there, we talked about wanting to have children soon. And then we left my sister's house. When we got home, when we were about to close the door, something grabbed the door from outside. But what? And then the door was forcibly opened, and a person came into the house. It was my mother in law, whom we had cut ties with. Her eyes had changed, and she began to speak in a low voice I finally found you. And this time. I won't let you get away. What? What are you doing here? Too bad. Just let me raise my grandchild. You were too useless. What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. I know you were pregnant. What? We don't have any children. Don't lie to me. Where's my grandchild? My husband comes running from the back of the house. And stands between me and my mother in law, as if to protect me. Hey, what are you doing here? Didn't we cut tie with you?、Uh, George, please don't say things like that. I came here to raise my grandchild. Huh? Grandchild? That's right. I'm a grandmother, aren't I? Please, let's raise the child together. What are you talking about? I also have the right to raise my grandchild. After all, we share the same blood. Erica, remember when we met at the supermarket and you ran away? You're such a rude woman! With just one sentence from my mother in law, I realized everything. 
the woman who slapped my sister was undoubtedly my mother-in-law. At that moment, an indescribable feeling filled my entire body. How could she slap a pregnant woman without even confirming who she was? I won't forgive her. I immediately called my sister, and then my husband and I took my mother-in-law to my sister's house. When we arrived at my sister's house, she saw my mother-in-law's face and muttered with a pale expression, "This is the person. She's the one who suddenly hit me." I knew it was her, but how did you know it was her? Well, this person is George's mother. George's mother? She mistook me for you, and thought I was pregnant. What? Even if that's the case, why would she suddenly hit me like that? I told my sister that I had been bullied by my mother-in-law in the past. Which was why I had cut off contact with her, and moved without telling her where I was going. My sister hugged me gently, and we both cried. My husband and brother-in-law were visibly angry, especially my brother-in-law, who clenched his fist and glared at my mother-in-law. How dare you lay a hand on my wife like that? You better apologize properly. What's wrong with you? I just made a mistake, right? It's because those two look alike. What did you say? You're such a terrible person, aren't you? I was willing to forgive you if you apologized honestly. What's the matter with you? As expected of the sister's husband of that woman, you are an impudent and really hateful breed of people. I bet your work is not good either. Yes, I am just an ordinary lawyer, who's neither great nor anything special. Huh? A lawyer? I'll ask my colleague lawyer to handle this matter. You better be prepared to pay me compensation. The mother-in-law's face turned pale upon hearing his words. That's right. To tell the truth, the husband of my sister is a current skilled lawyer. The law firm he works for has a good reputation, and he is quite competent. Suddenly, the mother-in-law seemed to understand her position, and her attitude changed. Now she began to plead with me, "Erica, this person is your brother-in-law. Do something." Why should I? If we don't do something now, he would sue me. I'm living on a pension. And if he demands compensation, I don't care. It's your own fault, isn't it? My mother-in-law stared at me with her mouth wide open, seemingly taken aback by how easily I brushed her off. I mercilessly pointed out the reality to her. In the first place, it's your own doing, isn't it? It's not something that normal people do. Insulting and attacking someone. Without even confirming who they are, the right thing to do is to apologize to my sister first, not to me. Don't you understand even such a simple thing? Well, wait a minute. I just wanted to raise my grandchild. That's why I said in the first place that I wasn't pregnant. Then I, even if I have a child in the future, I will never let you meet them. You were not our family in any way. If you understand, then never show up in front of us again. Perhaps my words struck her deeply, as my mother-in-law didn't say anything in response. Afterwards, she had to pay compensation for the violence against my sister and illegally entry into her house. Afterwards, with only her pension, she couldn't afford to pay the compensation. And ended up in debt. Now, I heard that she is working as a part-time cleaner. Perhaps in the future, my mother-in-law will never spend a day with her family with a smile. But it's all her own doing. It's something she brought upon herself with her actions. 
so I want her to atone for her sins as much as possible. As for us, we recently found out that we're pregnant. He was genuinely happy that new life had begun. We went through some tough times, but we should have a bright future ahead of us. We will work toward a happy future together as a family of three.